Hi everyone, I've been able to get a lot of content on problems in the industry lately and that's the worst thing ever. It's disappointing that there's been so many things in the last few weeks for me to talk about in terms of why the industry needs to have better welfare practices. But even just within the last week, there's been two more instances where I'm just like, oh my God, come on, come on. I know the horse industry has a lot of corruption and there is a lot of abuse enabled, but I thought at least at this point, people who are guilty of doing these things would at least get better at hiding them and wouldn't be so overt about them. So what I wanted to talk about is the riding in the Isabel Worth masterclass and also Caesar Para. Both of these people are dressage riders. People might say that I'm like attacking dressage and hating only on dressage. No, just like lately, there has been a lot more dressage things to talk about because of these events that have been coming about. And I do think that they need to get talked about because something that I want to make clear is that these are only the people who are getting caught doing these things. I think it's really naive to assume that there aren't more people who are flying under the radar who haven't been outed yet for the things that they're doing behind the scenes. Already the amount of people that we know publicly are doing sketchy things to horses. Just think about the sheer number of people who are probably doing these things behind the scenes. It's not just an isolated one or two people or one, two or three people. It's an entrenched problem and while I don't think it's the majority, it's a large enough number that we should be very concerned and we need to start holding people accountable. This is why I'm so about policy change because for the people who only care about wins and status, I think what will change their practices the most are if they stop being rewarded, if abuse starts getting cracked down on, if it's no longer profitable and rewarding to train and ride the way that they do. But anyways, let's talk about the Isabel Worth Clinic first because we're gonna talk about the less bad and then we'll talk about the worst thing. What I do wanna just warn people about is that the Caesar para clips are really disturbing. It's a pretty substantial amount of abuse and some people might be really bothered by it. So just a warning for when those clips come up, if you don't wanna watch them, you might wanna skip that part. As for the Isabel Worth Clinic, it's kind of just like, more hyperflexion so it's a little bit unsurprising from the standpoint of we know that dressage just isn't at all concerned or embarrassed by the amount of hyperflexion that is being normalized in and out of the show ring the reason why it's important to talk about though is that this is being taught at a master class it's directly in public people are filming and she is teaching people so there is truly no shame involved it's just right out there in the open public riding a horse very very hyperflexed and teaching people that that is the correct way. Like anyone who has her as a role model, who believes what she says is gonna be there sitting, listening, and thinking that that is the right way to do things. And that is the problem. Like these issues are not just about the people at the top of the sport. It's about everyone who sees them as a role model. And that trickles down all of the levels of the horse world competitively. And even for people outside of the competition who just wanna be like these upper level riders that they really respect. <sighs> It sheds a bad light on all horse people. Like, it just makes the entire industry look bad because for people on the outside, they're gonna look at the bad guys at the top of the sport and go, oh, well, if they got there at those practices, everyone must be okay with it because this is so publicized and obvious. And it does make us look bad. Like we really need to start doing immediate change because this is not okay. It is not necessary to ride horses this hyperflexed. It is not pretty and it's certainly not good for welfare. So why, why are we enabling this to the extent that is currently happening? Like, I truly don't understand it because there's no benefit to the horse. And the only benefit to the rider is that they're currently winning for doing these practices. But if those policies and the judges were to change the way they went about judging tests, then that would have to change. And if people are riding such stressed, hot, forward horses that the horse cannot go and do their dressage test without being extremely behind the vertical, then sucks, sucks to be you. Go back to the schooling ring and deal with it so that you can ride in the arena without them being that hyperflexed. Like, I think that's a terrible excuse. We're not entitled to being in the competition ring. And if the horse is ill prepared to the point where they're in a posture that is damaging to them, it is the rider's job to go back to the drawing board and sort that out before going into competition instead of expecting competition to enable them. 
For those of you who don't know, Isabel Worth is like a very famous dressage rider. Like she is a huge name in the dressage industry. And like, I know there's already people who like were criticizing her for hyperflexion, which is also why it's not particularly surprising. But what does surprise me is just how bold and public people like this are willing to be with these practices. Like they're truly not worried about getting caught or getting held accountable for anything. And I think that is one of the scariest things of all. The fact that they, don't fear any repercussions for what they're doing despite the growing amount of research showing why this is bad and where i stand now too is that let's pretend that one day hyperflexion is found out to be completely fine and maybe even good for the horse let's pretend until information comes out that is credible and hefty enough to go against all of the information showing the opposite there's no reason to allow it because the concern of it being as damaging and stressful to the horse as what studies are saying it is, is enough to just be like, yeah, let's not do that. Let's do something else. Because again, we're not entitled to the show ring. We're not entitled to handling horses however we want. It is a privilege. And if we cannot get into the show ring without abusive practices, it's our job to sort our shit out and go back when we're ready and more prepared. There shouldn't be any other exception to that. There's no reason for these practices to continue to be allowed other than for profit and because the industry doesn't want to piss off some of the elites at the top of the sport. So they're just continuing to enable them in problematic practices. Now, the Caesar Paraclips. So for people who might be bothered by this trigger warning, it is like he's flogging a horse with a dressage whip in several of these clips. Like it's, it's disturbing, it's gross. And one thing I wanna say before we go into it is that the working student that released this clip and posted it on his social media, his Instagram, you're doing God's work. You are a freaking like you're royalty. I'm so proud of you because it must've been so scary to do that, but round of applause because that guy needed to get outed and held accountable. The FBI has provisionally suspended him because of the videos, but only time will tell if they keep the suspension and if he gets suspended from other organizations as well. I think that we are very naive to believe that he is just like the one guy that's doing stuff like this. He learned from someone, he's taught people to do the same thing. So there are people that have followed his legacy that are probably doing the same stuff, or even if it's not as aggressive, they're still using harsh training methods because they've been desensitized to this. These upper level riders have a lot of students, they know a lot of people, they have trainers that they ride under. So we are kidding ourselves if we don't think that other people are not only aware of this, but also guilty of doing the same thing. And sure, we can deny the problem and pretend it's smaller than it actually is, but that doesn't do anyone any favors and it certainly doesn't do the horses any favors. It's kind of selfish because we're going about trying to keep ourselves comfortable at the expense of the entire industry and all of the horses in it. So we need to not do that. It's time to get uncomfortable and start changing stuff for the better so that we can salvage what is left of the industry and not continue rewarding people who are literally being the worst. This is not just an isolated occurrence. This is just one that got caught because if he's willing to ride like that in front of working students while being filmed because i'm assuming he knew that someone was filming and even if he didn't he's still willing to ride like that in front of people people knew people are aware that stuff like this is happening and they are protecting these people they are staying silent and to be fair going up against a big name rider would be very scary and i see why a lot of working students and other people would be too afraid to speak out so that's not to shame them but what I'm trying to get at is that these things aren't completely secret. They're, they're an open secret that other people are aware of. And it's time that we start to expose all of these secrets and actually hold people accountable for stuff because it is a big enough problem and there's enough people who are either guilty of looking the other way when they see stuff like this or doing it themselves. And they don't need to be role models for the entire industry. They don't need to be rewarded and competing at the upper levels. Heck, even if they're not winning or doing well at all, they don't deserve to be in the arena if this is how they achieve getting there. We need to start caring more about how the results that we see in the show ring are actually achieved than we do about the show that is put on in the arena. 
because a lot of people look at what they see in the show ring and if someone is winning and the horse looks pretty in their eyes, they don't really care about how it was achieved and they're willing to deny the fact that there's stress signals and other things indicating that the horse might not be comfortable or okay with what's going on because they just care about what's going on in the, in the arena. And I think the other thing is that people defend these upper level riders, one, because they don't want to admit that their idol is flawed, and two, because they might see themselves in some of these criticisms because they might have been taught to do the same things by their role models, their immediate trainers. So of course they end up defending it because they feel attacked by what people are criticizing because that is what they're taught to do, because it is that common. And even just going on these threads where upper level riders have been criticized or seeing the number of people defending them shows how big this problem is. There's a lot of people who are either willing to openly and vehemently defend harmful practices or, and slash or, participate in them themselves. And I sound like a broken record, but honestly, what is going to cancel this industry? It's not people like me talking about the problems and drawing more attention to them. It's the problems themselves. You cannot get mad at people for talking about harmful practices and crappy things that they've seen and get more outraged at the people speaking out about it in outrage than you do at the people doing the practices. It's completely nonsensical. It makes absolutely no sense at all. If you are embarrassed about certain practices being exposed and you think they reflect poorly on the industry, instead of getting mad at the people talking about them and trying to change them and hold the people who are doing them accountable, get mad at the people doing them. It is illogical. Sticking our heads in the sand and being in denial is not going to work. With the amount of clips that have come out just within the last month of upper level riders doing shady things, it should show right away that, that this is not something we can hide anymore. Stuff is going to keep coming out. So it's up to us to actually show everyone in the world that we care enough to actually address it and have that be where people have faith in what the direction the horse world is heading. Because the denying it and pretending that it's not an issue and trying to bury any discussion of it makes us all look way worse. And people can see us doing it. They can see the industry doing it. And it's gross. It makes us look even worse. So I just want to end this video by saying that yes, people who do abusive things to horses are in the wrong, but so are all of the people who are aware of it and look the other way or openly enable it or defend these types of things. And what I also want to clarify is that people who do these harmful practices, they're not necessarily doing it because they hate their horses and they want to be mean. They're often in denial. They're in a massive cognitive dissonance and they're arguing that what they're doing is fine and they're willing to go to their grave to defend it in a lot of cases. So they love their horse, but there is that conflicting feeling of wanting to do certain things to win because it's what they know and they don't know another way and they don't want to put the work in to change because it's scary and would change the entire horse world as they know it. So instead they double down and they defend what they're doing and call everyone else idiots. And it is so frustrating because you're made to feel crazy for noticing problems that are very out in the open because people don't want to listen to you. But all they're doing is trying to maintain their comfort level in the horse world and silence anything that creates discomfort. The other thing that I want to add is that while bullying is a problem in the horse world, Talking about welfare concerns from a credible basis and holding the people who are engaging in them accountable as well as those who enable them, especially upper level professionals and big governing bodies like the FEI, that's not bullying. They've made the decision to be a role model and in the limelight and profit to the tune of a lot of money for doing what they do. And if they're doing that in a harmful way, us, the consumer of the content and the show that they put on, we have every right to complain. All of these riders can ride a Grand Prix dressage test better than me, even if they flog the crap out of their horse with a, with a dressage whip. I'm not saying that I could outride them in their own test, but if that is how they achieved getting to the level that they're at, there is a problem. It doesn't matter how well they ride. It doesn't matter if they can ride circles around me when it comes to dressage stuff. If they achieved the whole riding circles around me by flogging their horses with whips, riding them in roll cur and doing other completely unethical things, they could literally be the, the, the god of all horseback riding and it wouldn't matter because if that's how they achieved it, that is the problem. And anyone with eyeballs and the ability to look up the science available on this stuff 
can see that it is wrong. Like you don't need to be a doctor to go into an operating room and be like, hey, that doctor operating on that person without a mask or gloves probably shouldn't be doing that. You don't need to go to medical school to say that. The idea that you need to be riding at the upper levels in order to have any valid opinion when it comes to horse welfare is a notion that was created simply to protect the people at the top and try to silence anyone else's opinion because they don't want to hear the criticism. They don't want to have to acknowledge it. And a lot of the people at the top, even the ones who are not guilty of the problematic practices, they don't want to get involved in the discussion against them because it'll alienate them from the crowd that they're involved in and it might cause them to lose opportunities which I think is a poor choice. I think that's selling out a little bit. It lacks courage, but I can see why people would be afraid to do that, especially up and coming riders who haven't established themselves. So even the people who aren't guilty, honestly, in a lot of ways are often a little bit guilty just by association because they're seeing what's going on and they know it's wrong and they won't use their name and their platform and who they are to speak out against it, which I think is a problem because if it's really about the horse and preserving the integrity of the industry, they should risk having damage done to their name to do the right thing. Like I, I, every time I post one of these videos, I know I risk people hating me more and having a problem with my content and shit talking me and just being mean about me in horse Facebook groups. Like I try not to look at that stuff, but I'm a person who's online. Like I see people posting shit where they're just dragging me as a person. And I don't enjoy that. I really don't. I'm a human being. I don't enjoy it. But I do it anyways because I think it's the right thing to do and there aren't enough people doing it currently. But the more people who do speak out and join the discussion, the more comfortable it'll become for other people to step forward and speak out. It'll create safety for everyone involved. And so that is why I keep doing this because I, I don't enjoy doing this. I would love to no longer have content to talk about unethical things openly going on in the horse world. I would love it because it would mean that the unethical things are no longer happening. But currently it doesn't look like that's going to happen anytime soon. So here we are. I've had way too much content to post about crappy things that prominent horse people have done over the last few weeks. And I'm freaking tired of it. Give me a break. Like, can we maybe get to like the end of February? I know it's a leap year, so it's an extra long February month. But wouldn't it be cool if we got to the end of February with like nothing else like this blowing up on the internet and social media because it just doesn't happen? That'd be cool. Pretty sure it's not gonna happen though. So 